Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Video True Dad, and welcome back to Total War Three Kingdoms. Well, last time, I think we did a good job mopping up a few problems that were starting to emerge around the Empire. We're now in much, much better shape. Lots of rebels taken care of, Liu Bao, we got ourselves a piece there, a piece he is paying very, very handsomely for, very, very nice indeed. Zhang Yan doesn't want peace yet, but we've kicked him out of Ping Wan, so he's unlikely to cause trouble there for the minute, meaning now I can throw all my armies at the south to deal with that situation once and for all. Perfect scenario, Cao Cao is just dead, we get rid of Cao Cao forever. And Sun Jian gets forced into a humiliating peace because sooner or later we need to mop up Yan Shao. Yan Shao is starting to get dangerously strong. Two big full stack armies right here, another one right here. And tragically, Lu Bu did not actually take any territory of Yan Shao. I was hoping that would happen, but no, he decided not to engage, unfortunately. Meaning, yeah, Yan Shao is starting to get dangerously strong. I don't like that one little bit. So yeah, the big question right now immediately is uh, the fate of Cao Cao. And then, uh, how long is it till we go back to war with Yan Shao? Because uh, Yan Shao, I can now declare war on without actually being dishonorable. I can get on with that because it's been long enough since we signed a peace. Now I know most of his armies are out of position because they're mostly down here or heading in this direction. So uh, there could be a good opportunity to just seize a bit of land uh, right here. We'll see about that. Sai Yan, the biggest badass who ever lived, might be more of a badass yet because uh, she might just be able to go and help herself to a lovely bit of farmland, uh, maybe even Yan Xiao's capital of Yi. We'll have to think about that. That could be very, very good indeed. But yeah, for the time being, uh, we barrel down south. Though I had a couple of thoughts about optimizing the empire a bit. In particular, Chen here. You see, Chen's being a bit on the annoying side right now because it's so unhappy I've got to actually make it tax exempt. Meaning, yeah, I'm leaving a giant pile of money and a load of food on the table. And part of the reason this place is so unhappy is because I'm collecting taxes here. But that tax is only worth 110 income being boosted up by, yeah, 195%. So basically, yeah, I'm losing about a grand of peasantry income, most of which is coming off the farming buildings, because I'm trying to collect about 200 gold in taxes. So uh, that's just a nonsense. That's completely a nonsense. We're just going to get rid of that right now. Right, that's going to be gone next turn. So now we can untax exempt these people, because sure, it's a minus three at the moment, but that building being gone, yeah, this place should start gaining plus five routinely, because... I want Chen to be nice and happy because it could grow by another 800,000 people. That would be worth a lot of money. It's making a surprisingly large amount of money full stop just because of the big amount of peasantry it's generating. So, uh, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Gonsun Zan. Now, he's an interesting one because uh, me and him sort of get on okay. Not enough to ally or anything, but... I just want to keep him sweet. So even though he doesn't really need food or anything, I'd like to just send him a bit of cheap food uh, just to keep him on side because uh, I'd rather he never fell out with me. I'd rather just keep him sweet. There we go. He doesn't want much food, but he wouldn't mind just a tiny amount. So I'm just going to take a little bit of money off him for that. No, I'm not going to give him money. I'm going to request money, but I'm going to give him a good deal. Here we go, 231 gold a turn for 10 turns. I'm swimming in food for the time being, especially as we're about to lock down Chen and make that place nice and stable. So yeah, honestly, I'd rather sell a little bit of food, propose that deal. That is a good deal for him. So as a result of that, yeah, he should over time just like us a bit more because I'm doing him a good deal. And this is very, very interesting indeed. So uh, I might be able to convert some of my former enemies uh, into customers. Because, yeah, Liu Bao doesn't actually own any farmland anymore. He's just got himself a city and a toolmaker, I believe. So, uh, he's basically starving to death right now. And his vassal, Huang Zhu, he's also very poor. And they don't even hate me that much. Right, I think we might be able to do something here. Okay, so we can tell here, yeah, Liu Bao desperately wants about nine food. And he really wants those. And he's apparently economically equal to me, which is good news because I'm actually doing economically pretty well right now. So uh, as a result of that, yeah, we'll be needing you to pay quite a lot for that food, actually. 
Oh yeah, now this is, uh, this is good right here, about five grand. Now the thing is, uh, don't want to sell you all the food you want, or would I rather just sell you a bit of food? Because, uh, yeah actually, I can get nearly as much out of you just for seven food. To be honest, that's probably, uh, that's probably about fair right there. Yeah, I think at that point he starts to get a bit low on the old money front he starts getting a bit annoyed uh, right at that point. So, uh, this is kind of the optimal amount of food to sell him, I think. Yep, I'll take that. Seven food for 440. So, that's the economy shaping up nicely. Now, we just move on to his vassals. Oh, Huang Zhu desperately wants food. He's wanting to go, yeah, right up to 12. I doubt he can pay for it, but let's see how much we can actually... No, don't give him food. Ask for it every bloody time. Right, let's see how much you can actually pay, however. Ah, tragically not much, so I'll just sell him a little bit. Actually, no, I won't. I think I'll just let him starve. Unless, of course, you can actually, yeah, pay for it in some other way. And Ancillaries, have you got anything good you can give to me? Nope, no you don't. Well, in that case, I suppose you can just bloody starve. Well, except for one thing, which is basically, I can actually, yeah, try and support his independence. He doesn't really want to be independent, but I can basically blackmail him into wanting independence, purely on grounds that he's so desperate for food. Now that's... That's interesting. Not necessarily because I want to do that to him, but... Yan Shao! Yan Shao, my old friend! You've got yourself two vassals right here, who I might be able to, in time, blackmail into wanting independence, especially Tao Ying. In three or four turns, the food I'm handing over to him for peace is gonna wear off. At that point, I might be able to actually genuinely blackmail him into wanting to throw off the shackles of Yan Shao. Oh, that'd be lovely. Right, all that buying and selling done. Yes, we're now up to plus 5,000 gold a turn. That's more flippin' like it. And I think you can uh, you can move a little bit further south. There you go. You can actually cross the river already. Are you guys at strength? Not quite, but I think you will be next turn. Fine. Next turn, we'll move you guys into force march mode and we'll get you moving south in a hurry. For the time being, yeah, Kong Rong, I think I'd like him to move down in this direction. Maybe actually, yeah, backstab the salt mine over here. Meanwhile, yes, this guy up here just makes his way towards the front with Sao Sao. Yu Rang can hold there, at least for the time being. Because, yeah, I imagine Sao Sao's gonna throw everything he's got at trying to actually stop Yan Shu, who's currently got his capital under siege, which will leave the toolmaker wide open for me. Alright, let's see what the big move is, because I suspect that's going to be the big thing right there. And... No. Whatever Sao Sao's doing, it's not moving to relieve his city. His city is uh, still under siege, but it's autumn right now, meaning, yeah, winter's about to kick in, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Uh, there's winter, and hello! Uh, what have we... What?! How the hell did you just do that? Wait, 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 wait. What?! How did Yan Shao just vassalize Sun Zha How? How is that possibly a thing? I just want to be clear, we are under the new current patch at the moment, so Yan Shao's obsession with vassalizing everything should... Right! So that's... That's a thing that just happened. Right, there we go. So, Sun Zhan has basically decided, with an empire this cocking massive that we can't even see all of, he's going to work... For Yan Shao, who's got this much territory. I have no idea how he made that happen, but it just happens. But as a result of that, Sao Sao, who was Sun Zhan's vassal, you can't be a vassal of a vassal, so as a result of that, Sao Sao didn't transfer over. Sao Sao is instead totally independent and completely exposed, so... At this point, yeah, we can just start picking apart Sao Sao because he's totally 100% boned. And as for Sao Sao's capital, with no relief force arriving, their supplies have run out. So they are now taking attrition nice and fast. Yan Shu should just be able to walk straight in. Right, okay. Just take this little force here. Once again, just walk him down the road just to see what's going on. 
They are refusing to give up that toolmaker. They really do not want to give up that toolmaker right there. Okay, fine, what have you. Bit annoying, because yeah, as long as you guys are there, that means I can't swing down here and take anything else. But then again, I kind of don't want anything else around here, because uh, round over here, yeah, this is territory belonging to Sun Zhan. And now, when I go to war with Yan Shao, I'm at war with Sun Zhan as well. Right, gotcha. Ah, but on the plus side, yes indeed, everything's looking much, much better over at Chen these days. Ah, and this is interesting. The public teachers actually, yeah, get the agricultural building costs down by 10%. So let's actually get that in play because that's nice and cheap and, yeah, it means subsequently upgrades here will be a bit more on the cheap side. Though, I am massively lacking in upgrades. Hang on, how far am I off those upgrades right there? And... Oh, way over there. That's a good upgrade too, because yeah, that upgrade unlocks a really cool unit. The Azure Dragons. Heavy Glaive and also Bow Infantry. Not much ammunition, mind, only 9 shots, but 40 damage plus 25 armor piercing. That's actually pretty damn good. Right, so in this new world, where the hell do I want my various troops actually positioned? Because... Uh, Okay, now I can't just actually wrap up the war with Sun Zhan and then go and take out Yan Shao. It's all or flipping nothing. In his new position of strength, Yan Shao could declare war any time and basically demand all his vassals join in. So uh, that means uh, I don't want to rush everything down to the south anymore. Probably. The best thing I can do is... Uh, yeah, I think I've got myself a plan actually. I think I've got something that makes sense here. The army of Mi Heng, you guys uh, go into, yeah, just force march mode, uh, get down towards Dong and thereabouts as fast as you can, please. Just keep going in that direction. Uh, I'd like you to be positioned close by to Ying Shan, because uh, if those guys are going to attack me, it feels like, yeah, plenty of big, terrifying armies are located right here around Luo Yang. So uh, we're going to need some defences to help with all of that. In fact, you know what? Probably uh, the best thing for you to do is actually uh, head in this direction. Keep going, uh, head down uh, towards the actual farmland itself. Because that farmland is, if I recall correctly, yeah, pretty well guarded. That's actually a high level territory. Possibly a level four, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's a level four. I can't even build that, but luckily, the guy who built it caught. So I've just inherited this. We know it's got walls because I ran into them when I tried to take the place. Garrison's pretty decent. Good number of actual medium archers, if I recall. Yeah, medium spears, medium archers. Not bad as a little supporting half army. That should be a pretty tough barrier for them to actually penetrate. Together with the fact that Dong itself is pretty strong right now because there we go. Having raised him and raised those troops, we've now got ourselves the army of Sun Shao back defending Dong. But now, of course, the troops I've raised are back with him, but I'm not paying for them anymore. Upkeep is always zero. The city just sort of pays for it by itself or something. So, uh, yeah, Dong is pretty well defended. Tai Shan not so much because, of course, the administrator there is Sa Yan and she's currently standing out there with her army over in Ping Wan. Honestly, it might not be a bad idea to actually have... Uh, yeah, I can afford it right now. I should probably raise a secondary force just to basically be ready next to her. So if she has to, she can start marching on Hene and Yi immediately. That should be a bit of a disincentive for Yan Shao to do anything too stupid. Who's floating around, by the way? Well, obviously, there's her old friend, Sun Shao. But weirdly, if I raise him again, I'll actually have to let his troops regather because they go back to mustering, which is a little bit on the odd side, but whatever. Ah, yes, there is her old friend, Jai Heng. She and him actually took this territory together in the first place. He's always actually got a great army. It's mainly just a bunch of bodies, but... It'd do. It would just provide, yeah, a front line to actually get in her way. And it would be nice to have... Uh, a decent, if not spectacular, champion. Maybe we don't need that just yet, but keep it in mind. What I'd rather do right now is, yeah, I've got a big old pile of money. What do I want to do with it? Because I feel like some of my cities could do with actually having a bit of growth on them. Yeah, here's the thing. If I actually want to upgrade any more buildings in Tai Shan, and that's the real economic heart of the empire, we need to be, yeah, level 7. That's what we need to do. So... If I actually start upgrading Tai Shan right now, that is going to cost a fair bit of money. It's going to cost some food. We do have the food to pay for it. But here's the thing. It also provides a bit of a boost 
to commerce. Only 25%, but not bad. Together with plus four to prestige, not bad at all either. Yeah, you know what? Let's actually get that done. And I could pay for that. Wow, that's a bit on the expensive side, but that's a good use of funds. I mean, at this point, as far as I'm concerned, Taishan is basically the capital, which I could actually make happen, but yeah, it would cost like 15,000 gold. So I don't really want to do that because there's not exactly much points. Anyway, with this guy heading over here towards the farmland, Kong Rong, you actually head down here and help with the impasse we've got going on with this guy. Stay actually, yeah, not inside Force March just yet. I'd rather actually, yeah, if at all possible, heal up my units to max before we actually make a move. This army is almost ready to move right now if need be. Yan Shu is probably going to get the city. Cao Cao is probably going to pull off some form of miraculous escape. Probably he'll pledge his loyalty to Yan Shao to get out of being defeated. That's probably what his next move's going to be. We'll have to see about that. Oh, bloody hell, right. Yan Shu wants to jump the gun here. He wants my military support against Yan Shao. Well, we knew this was going to happen sooner or later. This is honestly uh, a bit sooner than I wanted to. Especially as, yeah, I'm sort of on the front line of that one for the time being. If I say no, does that mean the end of the alliance? It possibly does, I'm not sure. Hang on, let's negotiate here. Because, yeah, actually, I'm doing you a favour here. Because you are very much having your ass kicked right now. Also, you apparently don't have enough food. So, okay, how about you give me all the money in the world and I try and help you out with some of these here problems? Here we go, he really does want food as well because he needs it to not die. Now, 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 now. That city that you took off me so very long ago, I think we need to potentially have a chat about that. Here we go, level six city, and that is just enough for him to be willing to say goodbye to it. The thing is, do I want him to say goodbye to it? Because it's about to become the front line in a flipping war. I mean, I could say, give up that. Or, I could instead say, you've got some farmland, don't you? Some farmland down over here. Yes, you do. Farmland that technically belongs to Yang Zhao, which, let's be honest, is effectively mine. So, how about we have a chat about that instead? Because that's not going to be so valuable. So you, yeah, let's actually talk about you handing over that. And on top of that, handing over a big old pile of money. Then again, if I do this, I've just basically screwed him over. Because that's a farm that's producing... Actually, it won't be producing 10, because he's not boosting that in any way, because he doesn't own the city. It's probably not producing that much at all. He's still going to get a benefit in food overall from doing this. Oh yeah, as it turns out, this guy's rich. Like, really rich. So... Okay, is this really worthwhile to me? Is this worth doing? Because uh, I suspect it is. For that much money, I can raise some big-ass armies, and uh, it's only a matter of time. Yan Shao's coming for me sooner or later. It's not like he's not, so... Uh, okay, I guess at this point, literally everyone in the world goes to war with each other. Let's do it. Also, you know what? Would you like some extra food? Because I could give you some extra food for a bit more money. Where is the barrier? That's still worth a fair bit to you. Okay, you you really want food. Yeah, because you're about to lose the farmland. I could give you all the food I own, and you'd still want it. That's that's of interest. Except, hang on, that's going up by... Ah, oh, that's going up by two at a time. Fine, okay. Yeah, let's actually... No, at that point, I think you actually run out of money. Gotcha. I tell you what, I'll give you 14 food for a grand together with some farmland. So for the next 10 turns, he's going to be hunky-dory. This is a lot of food to hand over, but that's a lot of flipping money too. And now it's pretty much all in with Yan Shu. Gotcha. Did you just back off? Did you just lose? Did you just flipping lose? Okay, so great start to this great joint military campaign. And yes, as I suspected, Yan Shao vassalized Cao Cao. I kind of saw that one coming. So, 
Oh, I think they just gave up and backed off as a result of it happening. They didn't want to actually give battle. So, as a result of that, Kong Rong's now declared war against... Oh, bloody hell, I'm back at war with bloody Tao Ying. So, at least I don't need to pay him the food anymore. I'm assuming that's not a thing. Okay, so I'm at war with everybody. That's all absolutely fine. Everything's okay. Okay, get my army down over here into this here farmland. That's very, very important indeed. Can you actually move out of your march post? No, you can't. You're stuck in that for the time being. Okay, but I've picked up even more territory, even more farmland, and that's very, very good indeed. So uh, this place doesn't like me hugely so far, but it's fine. Important thing, however, you... You definitely fought, didn't you? Because some of you have taken the slightest knock. So, okay. What I want to do now is, yeah, go and take the Toolmaker immediately. Because then if he wants to go and take it back, we'll have at least a little bit of an advantage there. In spring right now, just double check. Ah, you sent this battered old guy in that direction. Well, that's all absolutely fine. That shouldn't be a problem at all. We can take that, and that will actually give me the whole of Yang Zhao at long flipping last. The question is, where the bloody hell does Kong Rong and my primary army want to go now? Because, uh, diplomatically, yeah, I'm at war with everybody. I'm just at war with everybody right now. Actually, you're conveniently right next to Tao Ying right now. And they've actually gone and taken that territory off the Han. Meaning, just for once, these armies are separated away from each other. One army down over here, one over here. Oh, that's... That's an opportunity too good to turn down. Right, Kong Rong, get back over here. We're going to be moving straight into this territory and knocking over this city while most of their armies are away. Also, we are making crazy money right now and it's reform time. Have I ever mentioned I really like the reform tree? Because I do, I'm not sure I've ever said that before. Right, okay, what do I need to do here? Because I need to start thinking about what buildings I'm unlocking. Ah, here's the one, I think. Shaft mining, which gives me upgraded iron mining for Dong at Long Flipping Last, together with, what else? Bureau of Mining Subsidiaries. Can't remember what tree that's attached to, but probably that's a good idea right there. Yeah, you know what? Take that. That's going to be worth a lot of money down the line. So, Dong, yeah, get this place upgraded. Though, I can only upgrade it in one direction. I can upgrade it in the... Ah! I can upgrade it in the make more money direction. You know what? I'll flip and take that. That's better anyway. So, get that in production. Six turns is a bit of a long time uh, for Grand to boost it. But the thing is, it's going to take six turns. So, that's only about 700 gold per turn. But it's going to increase the amount of income by 100. But that 100 is going to be boosted by... Hang on, how much is it boosted by? That's boosted by 100%. So 200 a turn. So as a result of that, mathematically, it makes sense to actually boost the construction to make it happen immediately. Because the amount you're spending up front, you're going to get more than that over the following turns. Because the building will be generating more money faster. Under which circumstances, you'd probably want to always do it unless your money was desperately needed somewhere else. Still, for the time being, yeah, where are their armies? I see you down here. Problem is, yeah, you're a bit on the tough side, so I can't just move out Sai Yan to take that farm immediately. Instead, we need to actually build ourselves a new army. So, we already said her old friend, Jai Heng, he's coming back onto the field. So, that's going to cost a fair bit of money, but screw it. It's a good idea. And other than that, Shi Yi doesn't really like working with Jai Heng, so that's a no. How about Sun Shan? He'd be willing to work with them too, actually. That would be a really nice little dream team right there, but he costs a fair bit of money. You know what? I think we should actually just put off the mining just for the time being. The economy is in good enough shape for now. So, in which case, get the other person into production. I need a full stack army in that part of the world. Sun Shao, welcome back. Bit of a shame, really. I literally only just broke him down and sent him back to his garrison. But, uh, yeah, now he needs to retrain up these troops. Still, because they're actually mustering, it should happen nice and fast. So, uh, two or three turns, we'll have a full stack army ready to go. Ready to start rolling in this direction. Or, defend Ping Wan if they actually launch an attack from either of these directions. 
I mean, you could go over here and take Bo High, and then maybe you could even actually sell that for a giant pile of money over to Gonson Zan. That'd be interesting. Ah, yes, and change of target for my vassal over here. You change your target to this farmland. Go and take that out if you can. Who's leveled up, by the way? Someone's definitely leveled up. Hello there, it was my Chancellor. He's a bit of a nobody, to be honest, but may as well make him better at his job if we can. Right, you guys, the armies of you rang. Honestly, you're a bunch of absolute flipping nobodies, but I need you to just get in there and win anyway. And Jam, we've got ourselves a trebuchet, not an experienced one, but it's there. If we're lucky, we should be able to, yeah, just actually finish off a fair few troops like that. I mean, I could. No, I don't want to starve them out because the main army with their terrifying champion is on his way back. I'd rather just move in immediately, take these guys out. Here we go, one little encampment round here. And yeah, rather conveniently, this approach is pretty good because the towers are at a bit of an odd angle nearby, so they can't really get a shot at us. So if we just walk at this gate, it's only these two towers. Shouldn't be a big deal, hopefully, to knock them down. Though tragically, yeah, Lugans doesn't unlock the ability to use the flaming trebuchet balls. Still, it'll just have to flip and do, I guess. Okay, I feel like we got pretty lucky here. Level 1 trebuchet, but they've managed to take out both towers. So we've got a pretty good approach here. Especially as these guys have got, I believe, pretty much zero archers at all. So, uh, may as well just soften up the front gate with whatever's left of the rocks here. And, yeah, that'll do starting to soften them up. Especially as, ah, that's the infantry captain. So this guy's pretty much the toughest unit they've got on the field. Bit of damage to him. Very valuable indeed. In come the last few rocks. And a few of those guys are not getting up again. Love it. Right, units moved up. Let's just actually give these guys a little friendly Kong Rong hello. So yeah, everybody please open fire on these bastards. And I don't think they like that, you know. I don't think they like it at all. Be flipping beautiful. And more units try and come forward. And then it's like, actually, you know what? Let's just actually uh, stay out of this one for the time being. This just doesn't seem like a good time for us. Right, so they're already fleeing. Absolutely flipping love it. More units coming in. Change your targets over to... No, those are Saber Militia. So that would be a bit of a waste of time. We don't really want to go taking on those guys with arrows. They can deflect it too easily. So probably at this point, what we want to do instead is... Uh, just send in our spearmen and engage in an extended protracted melee. If they send in anything else, we can just handle that. My champion, however... He's actually now in a position to potentially do some good damage. And by the way, guys, don't accidentally walk into the range of that tower over there. Yeah, you guys just actually get over... Get over here. This would be a good sort of position for you. And yeah, I'm going to say actually, I'm just going to deploy all my spears directly forward into his horse line at this point. So... G on one, spears on the other. Because these guys have a million horses. So I'm just going to send in the pole arms and the spears to deal with them. Uh, and if their general wants to come forward, uh, I will gladly... No, he doesn't want to duel. Well, what a bloody coward. Now, my spears may take a very light knock, but the rocks may get in the way. So I'm not sure this tower can actually get a shot in. Even though technically they're in range... Uh, I think this tower is blocked. So, uh, yeah, Spears and G Militia just going in there. If need be, we can provide a bit of supporting fire just to make sure these guys are okay. In fact, you know what? Just for fun, you guys put one volley over there if you'd be so kind. Yeah, just drop 10 million arrows on top of them. They're going to start taking some damage nice and fast. They don't want to be here, actually. They've decided they don't like that one little bit. You guys just, yeah, keep pushing forward, actually. Keep pushing forward. These spears are trying to get in the way, so don't let them actually do that. Right, there we go. So their swords are now in the process of collapsing. Send spears forward to intercept the actual cavalry. Guys, fire at will, to be honest. Just start firing at anything you've got a shot at now. Their cavalry is... What a bunch of cowards trying to fall backwards. No, no, no. No, you don't. No, you flipping don't. Get on top of them. Slaughter them, please. Oh, yeah. At this point, any attempt to flank against my spearmen is basically flipping 
doomed. Uh, we can just, yeah, put all fire on the actual Sabre Militia, please. Uh, I want those guys out of the way. Uh, they're just going to, yeah, I don't care if you've got shields and 50% chance to dodge. Uh, you can't stand up to this. You just flipping can't. And all that infantry just flipping breaks. Bring up my cavalry, actually. We may be able to chase some of these guys down. Right, bit of a scruffy one here, but at this point, yeah, we got them nice and bottled up. We've not got much in the way of cavalry, but what cavalry we do have uh, is now in position uh, to get right up the backside of them. Uh, and they are now completely surrounded. They can't stand up to too much of that. Yeah, they're starting to waver. My champion is getting right on top of them. Focus on the guy who's wavering, please. Uh, I think we might actually have, yeah, a total surround here. These guys are falling apart. These guys just keeping the rear guard busy. Uh, come on. Get in there. Everything we got, please. Anything that's left, get in there. Start murdering them. They're almost broken. Oh, we got one break. We got two break. And now, that's it. That's going to be a lot. They can't stand up to this. Everyone, yeah, just wipe them out. This unit is going to be completely destroyed. And there's the total collapse right there. Yeah, that cavalry positioning was key. So, uh, we took some knocks to the G Militia. But honestly, uh, not much at all. We're still a very effective fighting force. Right, 700 gold, move straight in, and with that, we now have the entirety of Yang Zhao. Our territory is getting, yeah, nice and big at this point, nice and big. In fact, actually, we must be getting nearby to, yeah, Duke, just 33 rank away in terms of prestige, so we are getting there. So at this point, this army of Zhu Chu is 100% going to come and take me on, but now I've got the garrison behind me. It's not much of a garrison yet, but... It'll do. All right, it's just a few extra troops to help me out in the upcoming battle. Oh, we've got one big problem, though. So, Guangling, the territory I really want to keep hold of. Yeah, straight away, Liu Yao has deployed a very significant army. They're just going to walk in and take that. Right, okay. The garrison here is reasonable, but it's not enough to stand up to that. And there's not much I can do about it, unfortunately. This force is stuck here just for the minute. We're just going to have to take that later. Right, so Kong Rong is just going to march down here. He's going to knock Tao Ying out of this war entirely. They don't need to take back any of this. But we're sadly about to lose a trade port, which, which breaks my heart, quite frankly. You know what? No. Spend 400 gold just to actually increase that. Because that, yeah, that's a bit more garrison right there. Actually, if I just actually hurt the garrison, I might have just hurt the garrison because the old smaller garrison's been deleted to be replaced by a larger garrison that needs to regrow. So possibly there's now less garrison, I'm not sure. Also, if you guys have got any smart ideas, I'm open to suggestions for the time being. So, what do we want here? You want me to raise a force, just any force whatsoever. Great. Settlement administration. Great. Also settlement administration. You guys are very much lacking in new ideas, aren't you? That's all you ever bloody want. It's always just raise a force or settlement administration. Still, one good thing. Yan Shao seems to be sailing away. As he, you know, sometimes just sort of decides to do. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Liu Bei. Me and you need to have a word here. Because do you guys actually have... Uh, do you have border with that trade port? Yes, you do. Guys. I know exactly what I need you to do right now. So, you lot, select target. Yeah, go and get the trade port, please. Okay, I may as well give Guangling a bit of a chance, because I'm going to be honest, any army raised here is not going to last long. Oh, not you, I like you. You're actually pretty good, aside from... Ah! Shi Yi. You actually hate me, don't you? You've been a dick for bloody ages. Well, he's okay right now, but he has spent a lot of time being in the red. Right, Shi Yi. Good news. I've got an opportunity here for you to die for your country. And as a result of that, yeah, there we go. We've actually got retinue upkeep down. Does that stack or can I only get that once? Ah, that just adds five turns on to the end. So now I've got seven turns of retinue upkeep down. Lovely. Together with, yeah, more replenishment. Feel like we're going to need that one, actually. Yes. So, you guys can stay right there and... Guys? What? What did you just... Ah! 
You decided to raise up there, did you? Well, that's that's not very helpful. Right, well, at the bare minimum, you can defend the farmland, I suppose. Right, we've now got armies absolutely bloody everywhere. So, uh, everything's basically about to go to hell. Got it. I think priority number one right now is, yeah, just mop up the little guys. Before we actually engage fully, especially with Sun Zhan, we need to make sure that, yeah, Tao Ying dies. Liu Yao dies. Cao Cao ideally dies, but that one might be a bit on the tricky side. He just seems to keep slipping away from us. Meanwhile, yeah, the army of Mi Hang can just skirmish against Jian Shao. Take a bit of territory, do what we can. Support with Sai Yan and Sun Shao as best we can. My administrators are on the march. We should be able to do a good job destroying Yun Shao's actual heartland. Well, yeah, he's busy down south engaging with me and Yan Shu. Ah, now here's interesting. So, Yun Shao is already talking about peace. So, what does he actually want here? He wants to take the salt mine. He also wants to take Chen farmland. He wants to take Ying Shun farmland. He's willing to give me money and he's willing to sign peace. Honestly, there's no point. I mean, yeah, I'd be giving up a lot of territory for no particularly good reason there. Just because, yeah, he really doesn't want peace. But for some reason, he desperately wants farmland. Which makes me think he'd be low on food, but he's not. He's got plenty of food. So I'm not sure what he's thinking right now, but I'm not playing his stupid games. Okay, Yan Shao is now sailing back down the river in my direction. Not too surprising, really. No idea where he's going, but he's not on land yet. Another army is moving... That's more towards Yan Shu. Lu Yang might be a nice easy pick off actually. That might be nice right there if I could grab that. And yes, unsurprisingly, those guys are coming in. So I'm about to lose this trade port, which is kind of annoying because I purchased this trade port off this guy. So he's being a bit of a dick right now. I doubt I can win this with a vanguard together with... Uh, there's actually some decent troops here. Yeah, there's sword guards and everything. I can hurt him, but I can't defeat him. We'll give it our all, though. Actually, one advantage we do have, I've got plenty of archers. He's got basically no shields. So, yeah, we can most definitely make him bleed on this occasion. He's also not got much in the way of archers, and cavalry is lacking too. Yeah, it's a big old pile of G militia over here, and a small force over here, which is the vanguards, and yeah, it's a small side force. So... We might be able to repel that side force. Then we just need to, yeah, pretty much just throw as much as we can at the main force. Right, everyone just chill out over here for a second till I decide what we're going to do. Because, yeah, we've got secondary towers we can fall back to if need be. Yeah, this is looking dicey already. We don't win this. We don't win this, but we just have to give it our best, damn it. We just have to try. All right, forces just moving in immediately, straight into range of the towers, which is beautiful. Now, the towers. I might actually be able to make the towers pick off this guy. Hang on a minute here. You guys, uh, yeah, focus all firepower on the actual vanguard, please. I'd like all firepower targeted exclusively at him. Don't worry about that over here, however. These are just sentinels, so they're not so effective in day-to-day -day business. But yeah, if we could actually just take out their vanguard, or at least do some damage to him before he gets up close and personal, that would be welcome. Then he sort of disappeared out of view. That's a bit of a shame. Right, that's annoying. So go back over to him. Yeah, just um, keep focusing on him, please. Keep on focusing on him, even if he went missing for a second there. And then you guys... Uh, Move forward. Do not let them get a shot in. You guys are open fire. You guys are now free to open fire. No one skirmishes though. Just do what you can, frankly. Just do what you flipping can. Oh, they're just going to go for this gate. And that's not going to be fun. They're just going to move straight in. Right, so they've thrown themselves where I'm weakest, which is a bit of a shame. But, oh, that's just going to totally collapse immediately. Okay, um... You guys come back over here, help out as best you can with this business. That gate's going to fall immediately. You guys just get over here. They're resistant to arrows. Oh, this is just going to be a slaughter. This is just going to be an absolute total slaughter. Put what you can over the top, quite frankly, but 
I don't think it's going to do much. It's just they've got generals. I don't. Yeah, this is. This is an absolute no-hoper. The only thing we can hope for is, yeah, these guys actually get their shots off before everything runs out. So just basically start putting arrows over the top. Hit them as best you can. Even if you're doing a bit of light damage to my own troops, I kind of don't care. Get in there. Damage these guys anyway. Just do what you can to hold them back. All right. Let's just see what we can do here. And everybody keep firing. And oh no. No, this gate's completely gone already. I didn't have enough troops over here. These guys are falling apart. We've got more towers over here that can do a little something as they actually start advancing. You guys, keep firing as best you can. Turn your firepower over to... Yeah, here we go. This is this is okay. So these G Militia have basically given up at this point. So they're just too bloody useless to stand. The Vanguard is starting to take some damage at least. Yeah, we can't win. But we sure as hell can do some damage while we're losing. Uh, more units now just charging forward. Uh, what have I even got here? I've not got much. Right, you guys, uh, get over here. Hold these here towers if you can, please. You guys just open fire over there. You guys, oh, keep them safe. There's lancers coming in. Oh, bloody hell, this is... This is not looking so hot. But this is not looking so bad. Maybe I can kill the vanguard. If I'm very, very lucky indeed. Uh, I might be able to kill the vanguard. Do some damage to the archers, please. Just get this vanguard dead. Come on, if we can kill him... I'll flip in, take it. The vanguard is starting to waver. These guys are pretty much out of ammunition, however. Now they're totally out of ammunition. Right, in which case, you guys, get over here. Fight these guys, if you'd be so kind. Oh, they've already taken the towers. Right, so those towers are now going to start firing on me. Good stuff. Still, just, yeah, get any shots we've got left over there. And if you can, there we flipping go. Well done, lads. Well flipping done. Get over there. No, don't pursue, actually. Uh, fall back. The best you can do is make sure these towers get taken again. So we've actually chased off that vanguard. We've got some troops, but not many, to be honest. Um, We're still going to lose, but maybe not as badly as I thought. You guys just put some arrows over there. Right, we've now taken this tower back, right? There we go. Tower's back in my possession. And now, yeah, actually... See this guy off, please. I don't want him coming back. He's not allowed to come back. Just keep shooting him for the time being. So all fire on him. 13,000 and 11,000. And oh dear, you're not going to enjoy this one little bit, are you? How are we doing, by the way? Not great? Yeah, I thought it might not be great. One unit's been literally wiped out to the last man. You guys, your job is just to stand and fight here, all right? I believe in you. You can do this. I don't believe in you, but maybe you can do this. Uh, how are we doing on on this guy? He's down to 7,000. Uh, right. Finish off these guys. Nope, never mind. Don't pursue. Do not pursue. Instead, get back over here. Hit these guys in the rear. You guys, hit these guys in the rear. These archers are doing a surprisingly good job standing and fighting. Uh, we couldn't win this. No, we can't win this. But maybe? I don't know. Oh, he's down to almost nothing. We might be able to kill the vanguard right now. Come on. Oh, he's dead. He's flipping gone. That's one dead vanguard. They're not going to enjoy that one little bit. He probably was the owner of some of this here cavalry. Come on, guys. Come on, hold. Hold just a little bit longer. Oh, you're not going to be able to hold. We're out of everything. Still, we killed a general. I'll take that. That's better than nothing. No, that's it. That's it. That's dumb. It was a valiant defeat, though. We did some good damage, at least. We've defeated this guy before. We will defeat him again, all right? And yes, he is officially dead. Good. And thankfully, Liu Bao's not getting involved, at least. He's actually a bit busy with a Gonsun Du. So that's all absolutely fine. And yes, I know we've lost a bit of territory. We will get it back. Don't you worry. Okay, now this. This is looking... Oh, hello. Hang on, Liu Bao. Are you actually... Lubu, have you got that place under siege right now? Are you about to take that trade port? Because uh, I'm not sure. Lubu, hang on, get the camera around here. Normally we don't move the camera around. Uh, no, Lubu's already taken it. Right. That's that's nice. Okay. So that's one less bit of territory for this guy. Good. Because the thing is, oh, I thought Dongmin and me got on. 
Uh, well, we don't hate each other. Well, we kind of hate each other. Why do we hate each other? Have I done too many treaties with Ah? Basically, if I do any treaty whatsoever, he doesn't like it. Because every single person other than me in the world, he's at war with. Still, we do have a non-aggression pact right now. How would you like some food, by the way? Would that cheer you up? Oh, some food would cheer him up, and he's willing to pay for it. Not much, mind, so we'll lower the amount of food we're offering. But... 641 for 8. Not great, actually. I'll take 645 for 10 turns for 7 food. That'll do. So, yeah, we'll get that deal in play. Hopefully, that will help him cheer up a bit over time. I mean, Dong Min doesn't own much territory right now, but... Honestly, he's more reliable than Yan Shao is, at least. Right, which means that Liu Bei now needs a new target, because, yeah, he's kind of annoyingly out of the way, actually. I mean, I could just tell him to go and attack Tao Ying. I mean, presumably he is at war with Tao Ying, so I don't know why you haven't really... Oh! Speaking of which, where's the army of Tao Ying right now? I don't know. It seems to have naffed off. Well, that's bloody convenient, because this city is basically unguarded. There's no actual... Yeah, there's no garrison here. I mean, honestly, I feel like we should probably just move in and take it. I mean, mostly I don't like assaulting cities because, yeah, it's actually very wasteful and very destructive. But on this occasion... Oh, there's bloody... Is that yellow turbans? Hang on. Hang on, just continue the siege for the time being. Have you guys got a yellow turban rebellion inside? Yes, you've just got yellow turban rebels floating around. Marvellous. So, this place is already out of supplies. No supplies whatsoever. And no bastion artillery either. I think we could just actually walk in and take this place, to be honest. I've got the trebuchet, so I can knock down some tower defences. Yes, yeah, screw it. I think we're just moving in. I'm in a flipping hurry. I need to get Kong Rong moving down south to intercept the bloody forces of Liu Yao and get my trade port back. And I do consider it my trade port because I didn't steal that off him. All right, we came to an agreement. I paid for it. I've got a flipping receipt. Ah, especially as a night battle. Minus 15 morale. That'll really give me the edge. Got it. Ah, yes, and this is a level 7 city, so it's really, really damn big. And I see how you're arranged. So, yeah, we got ourselves the actual final plaza right here. You can't assault it directly, however, because there's tons of rocks here. And there's also not a path through. They might be able to burn one, but let's not talk about, you know, burning the city to the ground. We are the glorious liberators, damn it. And again... This over here looks like, yeah, this is going to be the best approach right here. There's a nice corner where if I can just take out these two towers, I should be able to... Uh, yeah, I should be able to walk pretty much straight up to the walls. That'll do. Okay, priorities during this fight. One, set fire to literally everything. Alright, as soon as fire damage starts ticking up, we don't need to bother doing anything else. So, uh, let's just get some fire down over here. This is a level 10 trebuchet, so... Uh, it should be pretty on the accurate side. Damage at 36. Keep an eye on fire damage. I think once you get to 50%, it starts ticking up automatically. Then when that gets to 100%, damage starts going up. So one more good hit should do that. There we go. So now you guys uh, change the target over here if you'd be so kind. Because now, yeah, fire damage will just start slowly ticking up. And then damage will start going up automatically. This is a nice big target for my trebuchet. So that should be no problem at all. So a couple of hits should sort that out. Oh yeah, 17 damage already. And uh, okay, rest of the town isn't on fire yet. It probably will be sooner rather than later. Because, you know, I am just tossing flaming trebuchet bolts into it. But oh, that was a big hit. Right, so 50% and rising. Do I want to bother going for this one over here? I mean, I may as well, to be honest. It's a bit further away, but I think we should be able to hit it. So, uh, then again, do we even need that one to go down? I've got 12 shots left. I kind of may as well just try and absolutely annihilate some of these guys. How good are you at hitting that? Yeah, you missed because of the range. I tell you what, change your target over to here. Take out some actual, yeah, some bows or whatever. Let's just see if we can actually just get some good hits on them. So, tower number one burns down. This place should... Yeah, that'll burn down in time too. Wait for it to burn down before we advance. 
Oh, yeah, we're starting to do some damage here, and that is very pretty indeed, by the way. I'm not even targeting this anymore. I'm trying to hit these guys at the front, and... Uh, ah, okay, so the splash damage is doing something. Uh, that's collapsed. Right, so, we've now got basically an open path to advance on the city, which is beautiful. So, just keep laying down some fire right over there. Oh, yeah, those guys are taking some heavy knocks. We've still got seven shots left as well. Right, go for... Who's the priority at this point? There's 195 archers right there. There's 218 right there. It was 200. No, 212. <laughs> Never mind. This is all fine. Right. I may as well use up all my trebuchet bolts before we actually advance any further. There's no reason to actually, yeah, start moving on the walls until we've weakened these guys as far as we can. Ooh, you just got some bloody flying right there. Also, I think we just accidentally opened the... Did we just open the gate? Right. I just accidentally opened the gate. So that's good. Oh, there's some big hits going on here. They're not enjoying this. They're not enjoying this one flipping bit. There's also, yeah, there's some spear guards dotted about here, but they are actually not happy about the whole... Oh, bloody hell. Oh, this is lovely. This is just absolutely gorgeous. And there's still another two shots there as well. This is just great. Right, keep firing on these guys. Let's just start weakening them just a little bit more. There's some more dead people right there. And actually, you know what? The final shot's about to come in. So, first up, they've still got archers. So what I actually want to do as a priority is... Uh, yeah, just actually deploy my guys forward, please. All right? You guys... Actually, one of you... Why don't you just go straight through the gate, please? Rest of you, climb the walls as fast as you can. And send the G up front as well. Once those guys are now moving forward, these guys can follow behind them. Stay at a range of that tower if you'd be so kind. Yeah, about, about here is probably about optimal because... Uh, no, that's... Hang on. Is that fine? Yeah, that is fine. That's fine for that one. And that's fine for that one. Yeah, about there would be great. And then basically they can just fire at will at anything they want to. So uh, there's a little light fire coming down on my assault infantry right now. But you know what? This is their job. They're supposed to assault. They've got the shields. They can block some of this damage. So you guys just get at the walls. They're not exactly spectacularly huge or anything. Uh, we should be A-OK, -okay, I'd say. it. Oh, I've suddenly set the city on fire. Sorry about that. It's very pretty at night. It's very, very pretty indeed. Right, so you guys, uh, just, yeah, get your ropes up. Oh, I like the ropes. They're very, very good indeed. You'd think these guys were trying to, you know, dislodge the ropes or something. But nope, they just can't be asked. So as a result of that, yep, yeah, now I've got assault infantry right in the middle of their archers. And they're not going to be enjoying that one little bit because archers are not really supposed to be doing this business. And we've actually got ourselves a big old attacks going on here. And scale the walls. Yes, you should indeed be doing that. That is your job. I don't know why you're over there, by the way. Get over here, out of the way, please. Don't scale those walls. All right, scale these walls. So at this point, the walls should fall to me. No problem whatsoever. We've got some troops at the front door here. They won't be able to stand up long. There's some Sabre Cavalry, but they're being torn apart by armor piercing. Yep, this is all looking good as far as I'm concerned. They're trying to deploy their horses in, so deploy my G militia to intercept them. That's all fine. And at this point... Vanguard, I'd say this is a good opportunity for you to just get in the front door and deal with all of this. And yeah, we've got plenty of fire being laid down just over the top. So they can't stand up to this for long. They just can't. Right, one of you guys hunt down these archers. One of you guys uh, go and take this here tower just to make sure that belongs to me. Other than that, looks like they've got... Yeah, there's one unit of G Militia at the rear. So we'll need to go and take those guys out sooner or later. But it shouldn't be a massive problem. And also, bring up my horses. They've got some archers that might need chasing down by the Luke of it. Right, the Vanguard's now on its way in. And now, Roar of the Beast, please. Get in there. Trash them. Absolutely trash them. And that's a good point, actually. My archers, I bet I forgot to. I forgot to put you in flaming arrow mode. Dear, oh dear, sloppy of me. Oh, in comes the fire arrows. They don't like that. Nobody likes that. That's minus four morale right there. Huge amounts of fire. Losing a lot of strength here. They don't like it. They don't like it one little bit. Shaken, that's going to be wavering in no time whatsoever. We're actually under a lot of fire, but these are Sabre Militia. This is their job. At this point, yeah, it's all falling apart. 
and cavalry get in there start chasing them down one unit of cavalry get over here one unit of cavalry make sure none of these guys actually escape in fact actually go for these guys if you can everyone focus on firepower over there yeah hit these archers if you'd be so kind looks to me like actually yeah we're starting to see shattered units on the field here this is uh, pretty much looking screwed for them actually and that's marvelously good news right uh deploy reinforcements in as best you can everybody else get in the city just get in the city uh, ride them all down and here we go cavalry are now getting in among their archers uh, archers flipping hate melee cavalry so they are going to be absolutely flipping screwed uh, they'll fall apart you'll chase all these guys down shatter them do not let them get away uh, Okay, we've pretty much taken the gate here. That is, yeah, they're all completely flipping screwed. Who's still got ammo? Surprisingly, plenty of you do. Right, fire at will off, please. We'll save your ammunition for, yeah, taking out the final G over there. Right, now I just need to sacrifice a handful of troops actually taking the towers that lead to the plaza. Because, yeah, until that guy dies, I don't win. So, uh, just send forward a handful of assault infantry to handle that business. All oh, right, I've really learned the advantage of, yeah, giant cities here. This was just a flipping maze of tower after tower after tower. The towers in the city did way more damage than the ones on the outside. That was, uh, yeah, not difficult, but definitely I've taken a bit of a battering. Now, this should be worth hopefully at least a bit of money, 190, but here's the thing. This is a level 7 city, which is therefore worth quite a lot of flipping money. Even if I actually reduce the settlement level, it'll still be a good damn city. So, uh, I'm going to actually say, we're moving in, we're looting and occupying it. Alright, so there we go. That's actually a big old pile of money, 11,000. Flipping love it. What's actually here, by the way? Because uh, Dong Chai is... Uh, it's tied to a fishing port, gotcha. Yeah, either a little bit of food and a hundred commerce, or... Loads of food and no commerce whatsoever. So, honestly, will I ever get this place up to level 5? I don't know if I actually ever will. So, this is a bit of a garbage territory, to be honest. It's just producing, yeah, a tiny bit of food, but not as much as an actual farm would. So, okay. I mean, at the bare minimum, you've got it set up for... You've got it set up for trade, I see. And also peasantry income, which is sort of interesting. Hang on, I'm not sure I agree with any of these here choices. Yeah, you're making 45 commerce right now. But then again, that's partly because, you know, everything's a bit on fire. Yeah, basically this place will never make any money whatsoever. So uh, I guess this is a reasonable enough setup for what you've got here. Repair all of this, I suppose. Ah, yes, Liu Bei. You don't actually have, like, a target right now, so would you mind actually taking this army and going and trashing that Yellow Turban Rebellion? It's not going to be difficult, but you know what? It would just save me a bit of time. Oh, and bloody hell, the army of Liu Yao can actually make it to this farmland next turn. This place is reasonable, if not spectacular. It won't be able to defend itself. Right, uh, Shi Yi, you're going in that direction. Good luck. You know what? I'll give you a handful extra archers. Not like good ones or anything, just the basic cheap lads, but it's all we can really afford right now. So have fun with that. Get over to that farmland if you can. Ah, yes. And now I'm sitting on a big old pile of money. What are the priorities right now? So public order in Chen is finally actually going up at a decent rate. because I've actually put a public school down there. So that's no longer massively urgent. We've got a massive army of Yan Shao moving in this direction. Though they might actually turn back because that lumber yard is probably about to be taken by a small force of Yan Shu. So that's good. They've already lost this here trade port. They're probably about to lose the lumber yard. This force needs to... Oh, this force is... This force is surrounded. There are three massive armies of Yan Shao around here. I don't know where you're going, but I'm guessing based on the road you're on, you're going for that there farmland. Now that farmland is... Officially it's level 4. I think I bought this, I didn't take it, so that possibly means it actually has like, you know, a wall around it. Or, well, not gates, but you know, it's actually got towers and stuff. I think, anyway. Ah, uh, yes, I really need to sort out Yang Zhu right now, because uh, this place is just a bit, quite frankly, weird. So, uh, 
It's got itself a merchant registry office, despite not actually having the ability to make any money from commerce. So I'm not quite sure why that's there. And it's also got the labour building that, yeah, massively increases population growth, but also produces a, a small amount of bonus money from industry, but not much, to be honest. Yeah, at this point, literally nothing. Up to 25, then 40% up. I mean, I suppose that's not terrible because it's quite difficult to get industry up. So, uh, it's not a bad pick in some ways. But yeah, also, uh, public order's collapsing here because there's a tax collection office. So, uh, that could probably just go away, actually. So yeah, we'll just uh, get rid of that. And we'll also get rid of that too. So that's good, yeah. And then, if we can, I wouldn't mind actually building this to... Uh, hang on. Yeah, actually get this turned over to 25% income from industry. That's probably a good idea because we've now actually got the tool maker. How much are we actually making from that right now? Not much, just 300 base. So yeah, that one actually boosts that to, what, 375. So uh, is it instead better to actually just get this place boosted itself then again that's expensive yeah let's actually just get that up to 375 that's not too bad so those two can be demolished that can be upgraded that's all absolutely fine i've still got myself a big old pile of money that place needed a bit of work just to actually make it you know make sense you know what it's got cheaper as it's got closer yeah i'm gonna spend a grand and a half just basically getting taishan up to where it should be immediately lovely and Settlement administration. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant the administration officers, not the... Never mind, you just wanted me to make a city bigger. Yes, I did know that in the back of my head. Lovely. In which case, just more and more and more income from commerce, please. Just keep it ticking up. In fact, you know what? Do it immediately. We've got the money. Keep it going up here. More money from commerce. More and more and more. We can pay for that too. Screw it. More and more and more. There we go. Can we get even more? Yes, we can. Artisan workshops. And sadly, we can't afford to upgrade that. Right, I've just spent all of the money. But that is going to pay for itself right there. I've saved myself a ton of flipping turns. And that's producing immediately like 200 more gold a turn. That probably wasn't worth it. Screw it. I don't care. I love Taishan. I would do anything for it. Oh, and Sai Yan has also picked up a much deserved little level up right there. I love Sai Yan. She's flipping great. Right, Sai Yan... Patience. That's actually not bad at all. Patience is uh, pretty damn good. Alternatively, yeah, she hasn't actually got precision yet. She kind of started in the wrong corner for that. She also doesn't have reach. Oh dear, there's a bunch of stuff she could ideally do with. Hang on, potentially would, yeah, your friend to make the better commander here. Yeah, he's got reach already. And does he have patience? He's got flexibility. Where is Patience? Ah, that's way up there. Still, he does have reach, so that's fine. So yeah, when they start moving, he's going to want to lead the army. When they actually get there, we put her in command because she can actually do Patience. And that also moves us, yeah, in the right direction for precision, for composure, night battles, flaming ammunition, all of that good stuff. But yeah, just so I don't forget, Yu Zhanghai, I'd like you to take command, please. There we go. The thing is, that army is right there, and I don't know what they're planning to do next. There are so many armies nearby. Mi Heng could be in a bit of trouble here. I'm a little bit worried. You see, the problem we've got now is Yan Shao himself, his personal army, could just come ashore and attack this farmland immediately. And that's a bit of a problem, because I want Mi Heng to be able to march south. Because Yan Shao is totally invading right now, and this territory is... Uh, I wouldn't say it's unguarded, but it's not looking great. Cao Cao is currently... No, Cao Cao is part of this war. He's been vassalized by Yan Shao, so I can't just peace out with Cao Cao. I don't think I can anyway. Actually, I think I can, but then if I do, immediately after that point, Yan Shao will just command him straight back in, so that's not gonna fly. Oh, but there's one advantage I do have... That's my army! Right, it's finally time for that spy to pay for himself. Oh, what's that? A military revolt, you say? Oh, oh, I don't mind if I do. And one of our spies has convinced the retinue that their warlord is a liar and an imposter, causing them to rebel against their former masters and providing you a new army in the field. So that, that's now my flipping army.
So, problem solved, actually. Oh, I've been waiting a long time to do that. But there we go. One of Yan Xiao's armies now simply doesn't exist anymore. It's now moved over to me. Sadly, the other generals don't. I don't know if the other generals maybe would defend if they liked you enough. But, uh, yeah, not sure about that. This is looking uh, like it's good stuff to me. And would you believe that might just open up the opportunity for me to go and seize Liu Yang with Yan Shao's own flipping troops. Now, we might be able to go and reinforce, but I'm glad I remembered that, you know, I actually owned this general. You, my good man, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You deserve a promotion. Can we give you a promotion? Okay, we can't afford it right now. I'm giving you a promotion next turn, all right? You deserve it. Also, you're actually pretty damn good at your job, all things considered. Feared, artful, vengeful, creative. Yeah, you're actually a damn good vanguard. You're apparently legendary as well, la -de da You know what? I'm giving you a guard, because I feel like, yeah, at this point, Yan Xiao's probably after you. Plus, two extra instinct won't hurt for when you actually need to engage in fighting. Alright, I'm pretty happy with the start we've actually got there in that case. So, uh, we've lost our military intelligence advantage over Yan Shao. Now I can't see what he's actually doing. I don't have visibility of his armies or whatever. But, what I do know is, uh, there's one less army on the field. Because it now belongs to me. Life is good. We've managed to, yeah, at this point, deny him the trade port, because that's moved over to uh, Dongmen. The Lumbion should momentarily move back over to Yan Shao. I can at that point maybe take the town, and possibly I want him to swap that with Yan Shu. So I actually get the capital of my farmland, and he gets the capital of his lumberyard. That would probably be for the best, actually, yes. I'm not sure he'll go for it, but maybe I'll toss him a bit of extra money just to sweeten the deal. And on top of that, the days of Tao Ying are very much numbered at this point. Kong Rong is on the march. We need to keep moving. If we can, hold on to the farm long enough that Kong Rong can relieve this area, take the trade port back, and then head over here and take this bloody city off you, you stupid bastards. And of course, the question does remain, how the hell do I deal with Sao Sao? The man is doing a very good job holding on, despite only having, yeah, a single province. Mainly because he's got a champion with a giant hammer who I'm rather scared of, it must be said. If only he was willing to come and attack the toolmaker... I could beat him and then take the city, but I suspect at this point, Sao Sao's going to play defensively and wait for a good opportunity, because that's very Sao Sao-like, because Sao Sao is incredibly clever. Right, I think that's enough for now, ladies and gentlemen, but big stuff coming up next time. The war with Yan Shao is heating up at this point. There are still big, terrifying armies just outside my farms and nearby to Dong. I need to defend both, and on top of that, yes indeed. If I'm lucky, I might be able to do a nice little deal with Yan Shu here so that both of us get a completed province out of this. We shall see about all of that very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nut. This has been Total War Three Kingdoms. Thank you very much and goodbye. No, this no, this no, guy's no. enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. <laughs> oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariots! Yeah.